Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today I wanted to talk about a new discovery of potentially six more exomoons, or moons of exoplanets somewhere out there, that we may have just discovered. And also, I wanted to discuss some of the other exomoons we've discovered in the past as well. Let's talk about this, and welcome to What The Math. So, as of right now, we've discovered 4,171 exoplanets that have been confirmed, with a few thousand more being investigated as potential exoplanets as well. In other words, we got exceptionally good at detecting various exoplanets out there, and most of them were actually found in this way, by looking at the star and by seeing this very specific and also very periodic dip that happens as the planet passes in front of the star. This is the most common method of finding exoplanets. But this method has now also been kind of employed to try to discover various exomoons as well. And as you can probably imagine, if other star systems are anything like our own solar system, then even though we have 8 planets, there might still be hundreds and even thousands of various moons orbiting around these planets. But because of their size, they don't exert enough gravitational effects or enough dip when passing in front of the star for us to truly see them with modern current telescopes. There are several telescopes that are being researched right now that could potentially detect them in the future, but for now we don't really have anything. So detecting any exomoon right now is absolutely incredible, simply because of how difficult it is to do. One of the more obvious detections was actually around this gigantic planet with extremely enormous rings known as J1407. Here, when the planet was discovered and when we discovered its rings, the uh, assumption was that inside of these rings, most likely inside of some of the larger gaps here, there might be some moons as well. We didn't really directly see the moons, but we implied their existence through the existence of some of these really large gaps. Current assumption is that there are at least two exomoons here, but it's also very likely that there are hundreds if not thousands of exomoons present around this tremendously unusual and exceptionally uh, unique planet. Another really unusual detection was back in 2014, and this was of a rogue planet, a free-floating planet that doesn't have any stars, that seems to have an object orbiting around it. And because this object is not really a brown dwarf, it's basically an object that's more massive than Jupiter, but less massive than 13 masses of Jupiter, and because it had an object orbiting in its orbit, we can truly call this a star system. This is a rogue planetary system, also known as Planemo. And this object did seem to have a moon around it. And so this is one of the more unusual exomoons we've discovered. A rogue planet with an exomoon that was most likely kicked out of a star system a long, long time ago. Another really unusual detection was um, in regards to this object here known as WASP-49b. A few years ago, the scientists detected an extremely strange envelope of sodium orbiting around this planet as well. And to scientists, it meant that something was emitting a lot of sodium, but probably not the planet itself. They looked at some of the examples from the solar system and realized WASP-49b could have an object similar to Io, the moon of Jupiter, that is volcanic in nature and that's emitting all of the sodium, and essentially that's what they detected a few years ago. But currently there's no way to prove if it's a moon that's causing this or something else. The assumption here is that it's probably the moon, but we don't really know exactly what caused all of the sodium to be emitted. But one of the more original ways of detecting exomoons focuses on trying to capture the light reflected by the planet itself as it orbits the star. So as the moon orbits around the planet, it will most likely cause the changes in the light that we detect coming from the planet. And this uh, detection, if it's periodic especially, can be associated with potentially moons orbiting the system. One such system is right here. This is WASP-12b, where a few years ago scientists may have detected an exomoon in the orbit of this planet. Another one is right here. This is a planet known as HD 189733b. And both of these planets, as you can see, are extremely close to their parent stars, so they have to be really easily visible and have to already emit a lot of light. As we get this reflection when the uh, planet is on the other side of the star system, and as the moon passes in front of this planet, we should see a very periodic dip here as well. In other words, to help you visualize all of this, if this is the system, with the star and the planet being relatively close to one another, 
Here, the planet will be bright enough to emit its own light as well, because of the heat produced by the star. And at some point, you'll see that there's a tiny, tiny shadow from the moon passing in front of the planet that will actually cause the dip around the planet. And this dip right here, this shadow on the planet, can potentially serve as a way for us to detect exomoons. But another way of seeing these exomoons is if the moon itself is massive enough to then pull on the planet and to cause it to wobble a little bit in its orbit. And in this simulation from the Canadian researchers behind the recent paper, you can kind of see what it means. As the planet orbits around the star and as the moon orbits around the planet, it creates these periodic motions of the planet that can be visible in the light we receive from the exoplanetary system. And because of these periodic observations, the scientists behind this paper believe they discovered six more exomoons out there. In other words, we might have another method of detecting exomoons even better than before. This particular method can be used to detect a lot of other similar objects, and it does seem to be a more robust method that allows us to see the action of the exomoon on the exoplanet. So this is a much more direct method of detection of exomoons compared to previous methods mentioned. It's also somewhat similar to the method we use to detect other exoplanets known as radial velocity method, where we actually see the wobble itself when the exoplanet causes a slight changes in the light of a star. But here we're observing these effects on the planetary light received. So in other words, this method can be now adapted to much smaller objects objects that are usually very, very difficult to see otherwise. And the method that they use to detect this is known as transit timing variation. Here is a brief simulation that will explain to you how all of this works. In this case, it's an example of an exoplanet and a star. And you'll see that as this planet moves around the star, if there is nothing in orbit of this planet, the time that it passes in front of the star will always be the same. However, if we now have another object that's not visible to us orbiting around the star system, the transit variations will be a lot more apparent because there is now a gravitational pull on this planet. And we'll see these gravitational transit variations happen with very, very specific periodicity. In other words, we can now deduce that something is pulling on this planet. And although in this case it's clearly an exoplanet we haven't discovered yet, it can also be done by much smaller exomoons, and the so-called TTV or transit timing variations will be a lot smaller but also a lot more frequent, thus allowing us to estimate what kind of a moon it is. But obviously, as the simulation here shows, technically, it could also be maybe other planets. Even though the best explanation right now are the exomoons, it could also be unusual exoplanets in a very, very unique orbit. This is very unlikely right now, but it is possible. Although because of the observations and because of the frequency of these TTVs, it's very, very likely to be an exomoon and not an exoplanet. And all of the exoplanets and exomoons involved here are actually kind of far away from us, anywhere from 200 to about 2000 light years away from us. All of these Kepler systems were discovered by the Kepler telescope a few years ago, and pretty much all of them have been already investigated and all of them had these confirmed exoplanets. But obviously, none of them were investigated for potential exomoons. And during their investigation, the scientists discovered two more objects that also possessed transit timing variations, but now the scientists believe that those two were actually caused by invisible exoplanets. It's unlikely to be exomoons, it's more likely to be planets we haven't found yet. So essentially, the scientists behind the study discovered six exomoons, and most likely two more planets somewhere out there. And with so many new exciting techniques to discover these previously invisible objects to us, it's actually kind of fascinating to find out how the scientists are able to see all of this and deduce all of this, even though the original data was collected almost a decade ago. But unfortunately, we can't truly see any of these objects just yet, and none of the current telescopes are able to detect exomoons either. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to know if these exomoons are similar to, for example, Titan, to Io, to any of the other interesting moons in our solar system, and we're definitely not going to know if they have liquid water and oceans inside of them either. Although a lot of these moons, because they're so close to the parent star, are very likely extremely hot and most likely just as inhospitable and just as hot as the planets that they orbit. Nevertheless, it's really exciting to hear about these discoveries because the techniques are extremely clever. But anyway, until we discover more exomoons or something else about these particular exoplanetary systems, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. 
Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.